Just a note, you should probably do this over a sink just in case you make a mess. Hi and welcome back to the farmhouse. Today we are going to make up a batch of our hummingbird food. My aunt called the other day. Um, she lives in Virginia and she said she saw her first hummingbird and then I saw a post on Facebook yesterday that the hummingbirds are back in Maryland. We are going to make up a batch of hummingbird food to help attract those hummers to our backyard. To start with our hummingbird food, we are going to fill our measuring cup with two cups of water. Two cups of water. And we are going to add half a cup of regular white sugar. There is no reason to add food coloring or anything else to this hummingbird food. It is actually recommended that you don't add anything else because it can harm your hummingbirds. So I'm going to give this a little stir and then I'm gonna put it in the microwave for about three to five minutes. We'll see, I'll put it in for three. If it's not really warm enough yet, I'll put it in for a little bit longer. I am making a smaller batch of hummingbird food this time because I don't think the hummingbirds are here yet and I don't want to waste all of the hummingbird food. Hummingbird food does have an expiration date on it and that expiration date is really dependent on how warm it is outside and that will determine how quickly your hummingbird food will go bad. So I'm going to make a smaller batch today and then as they start to come into Maryland more, I'll make bigger batches. When you are making hummingbird food, you want your sugar water ratio to be one to four. So one part sugar to four parts water, which is why we did two cups of water and only a half a cup of sugar. Out of the microwave and I'm going to stir this until all of the sugar dissolves. Just make sure that while you're stirring it, you don't stir all of the water out. All dissolved I am going to let this sit until it reaches room temperature one of the things that I often do is I will make hummingbird food in the evening after I've cleaned up from dinner then I'll let it sit overnight and then I can guarantee that more come morning it's at room temperature and it's ready to go in our hummingbird feeders so I'm gonna let this cool until it gets to room temperature and while I do that I'm gonna pull out two hummingbird feeders that I'm gonna put up to start with While we wait for our hummingbird food to cool down, let's talk a little bit about our hummingbird feeders. The first thing to note about hummingbird feeders is that you need to make sure that they are clean. Anytime that we are refilling our feeders with food, I make sure that I give them a good scrub to prevent the mold and the bacteria from growing. It is sugar water, it gets warm, it is gonna grow mold and bacteria, and we don't want to introduce any of that to the hummingbirds. So we have fine toothbrushes and those straw brushes that we make sure that we clean all of these little ports on anytime we fill them up with new hummingbird food. These were cleaned really well at the end of the season, but before I put new hummingbird food in them, I am gonna give them a good 
rinse. They have been sitting in storage for about six months, so just need to get that dust off of them. Now, the two types of feeders um, that we're going to start with, we have tons. We probably have like 12 different hummingbird feeders that we put out every year. We just absolutely love hummingbirds. But we have found that these two are really liked by all of the hummingbirds. And this one here is just a simple glass globe with the ports around it. You fill the globe. Get this open for you. You fill the globe and then when you flip it over, the hummingbird food sits in the bottom of this. We have had really good luck with this. Um, we don't have many ants that get into it and we don't really have many bees that get into it. We do use these little moats at the top of them to help with the ant problem. But for the most part, we have been had really good luck with these feeders. I will link the all of the feeders and everything that we use below in the description for you along with these ant moats, which are game changers. So we absolutely love this feeder. It is also really good to note that hummingbirds are attracted to the color red. They also do orange and yellow, but mainly they love red. So if you can find a feeder that has red, you're, you're going to attract the hummingbirds to them, which is why most of our feeders have a lot of red on them. This is a feeder that I found last year that we started using, and this one suction cups to a window. It's the same thing, you fill the reservoir, it drops into the bottom, but this one we can attach it to a window, and then we can watch the hummingbirds out the kitchen window, which is where I put this one. So this has become a favorite that we also really like to use. This one does not need an ant moat, and we have actually not had any problems with ants or anything on this feeder either, so another great one to use. There are some other window feeders that we have and we've used as well, and I'll, like I said, I will link those below for you. Hummingbird feeders are a great way to start attracting hummingbirds to your yard, but there are tons of other ways that you can attract hummingbirds to your yard. And our favorite way, or one of our favorite ways, is to plant hummingbird favorite flowers or plants. And I have a free guide, which I have linked below for you, on tons of different plants that you can add to your garden, to your landscape, that will help attract the hummingbirds to your yard. So I am going to link that below for you. It is chocked full of tons of perennials and annuals that will bring the hummingbirds to your yard. I have also linked below some of our favorite books about hummingbirds. There is one in particular that we absolutely love. Um, it is one that my, um, I can't remember who gave it to us. I think my cousin gave it to us when my mom passed. But it is a great book and it goes through the whole hummingbird journey and their migration, which is very similar to the monarch's migration and so amazing. But we learned so many things about hummingbirds from this book, so I'm gonna make sure I link it below for you. My hummingbird food is cooled to room temperature, so I am going to fill these feeders up. I'm gonna put about one cup of hummingbird food in each feeder, and then we will go hang them outside. Just a note, you should probably do this over a sink just in case you make a mess.
there you have it, how to make hummingbird food and some tips and tricks for having healthy feeders and attracting hummingbirds to your backyard. If you want to know more about attracting hummingbirds, what are the best feeders? I have left tons of links below for you to check out. If you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comments. If you wanna see more of our hummingbird adventures and the hummingbirds that visit our feeders each year, make sure you head on over to Instagram. We post tons of videos about the hummingbirds that visit, and we even have blink cameras set up to watch some of our feeders. So we post all of that over on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me at the farmhouse today, and we will talk to you soon.